Hello everyone, welcome to 10 Minute Physiology. In today's video, we're gonna see how bicarbonate acts alone as a buffer, so without any other buffers in the solution. So with that, let's give it a go. So I'd like to start off by reminding you how the bicarbonate buffer system in our body is an open system. And remember, it's an open system because the bicarbonate buffer system, which is inside our blood, is exposed to the air in our alveoli because remember, the air can diffuse through the membrane of the alveoli into the blood. So therefore, it's an open system. So we can look at this in an analogous way by looking at a beaker filled with a solution. So let's just say you have CO2 in the atmosphere at a specific partial pressure. This CO2 is in equilibrium with the CO2 dissolved in the solution. And then the CO2 acts with water in order to form bicarbonate and protons. So this right here is the bicarbonate buffer system. So if we were to add base to this solution, this would actually decrease the amount of protons, which will bring more carbon dioxide from the air into the solution. And since carbon dioxide can both leave and enter the system at will, this means that the system is open. So what we're going to do is we're going to see how the pH changes if the bicarbonate buffer system is the only buffer in a solution. So this is the chemical equation for the bicarbonate buffer system. And what we're going to do is we're going to start off with the initial concentrations here of these different things. So we start off with a pH of 4, and these concentrations here are all in millimolar. So in scenario number one, what we're going to see is we're going to see how the pH is going to change when we double the amount of CO2 inside the solution. And what we can do in order to calculate the pH is we can basically use this equation here, the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation. And when you do that, you plug in these values. So remember that the A minus on the numerator is going to be the bicarbonate, so that's 24 millimolars. And then at the bottom, you have for the acid, the CO2, which is 2.4. Now, because we're adding CO2 into the solution, this will push the reaction to the right, which will cause more bicarbonate to form. But what we're going to do is we're going to assume that the amount of bicarbonate formed is very small compared to 24 millimolars. Therefore, we're just going to keep it out of the equation. And then when we calculate this, we see that the pH is equal to 7.1. So now we're going to do scenario number two. If we were to do scenario number two, what we're doing is we're doubling the amount of bicarbonate in the system. And what we're going to do is we're going to see how the pH changes again. And we can do this by using the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation and we plug in our specific values right here. So remember that the first thing is that we're adding bicarbonate. So in other words, we're adding product. And when we add a product, this pushes the reaction to the left. So therefore, what's going to happen is that product is going to be used up in order to form CO2. But what we're going to do is we're going to assume that the X produced and the X taken away from the bicarbonate is going to be very small. So the amount of X that is taken away from the bicarbonate is very small, and the amount of CO2 that is produced is also very small because it's an open system. Therefore, we can simplify it to this equation here, giving us a pH of 7.7. .7. Now, the last scenario is if we were to double both the amount of CO2 and bicarbonate. And if we were to do the exact same calculation, what you would see is that the pH doesn't change at all. So that's it for this video. It was a very simple video, and I hoped it helped you understand how to calculate the pH if bicarbonate is the only buffer. So I hope this video helped you understand these things, and I hope to see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.